Well, hi everybody and welcome to another piano video here on the Miriam Pianos YouTube channel. This was not a video I was expecting to make, but quite excited to announce that uh, as I indicated I might in previous videos, I actually did make the switch from acoustic to digital for my home studio playing piano. This was for a variety of reasons, not because I think digital has overtaken acoustic in terms of what the best of both can necessarily musically accomplish, but because in my instance, digital wound up being the most practical solution. Um, I had a lovely acoustic German upright piano, um, w complete love affair with that instrument. However, because I was not able to manage the sound within my own home, I wound up not really being able to enjoy it. Uh, you know, five minutes a day, I might have had a window to sit down and play without waking up a baby or disturbing a spouse or what you name it. Uh, and I'm not alone in this. Modern life is getting busier, uh, living spaces are getting tighter, and there are a chunk of us where acoustic pianos without any sort of sound management just isn't plausible anymore. So there's two main solutions that are coming out to address this. One is acoustic pianos with silent options. That's become very popular, uh, you know, something like 20, 25% of all of the acoustic instruments going out of our shops these days have some type of, uh, you know, sound mitigating technology on them or silent technology on them. Uh, the other way is to go with a digital piano that musically still satisfies you. Uh, and so that is behind me, a Novus 5. Happens to be the Kawhi. I really liked it. And so I, I took the plunge. Uh, so that's the first thing I wanted to say about the video. Um, but the other reason I'm making the video is now having had that instrument back and having just completed a pretty exhaustive, uh, you know, exploration of the whole VST world, uh, I've read a few comments where people were really curious to know what is the comparison between great VSTs these days and great digital pianos these days. I certainly was under the impression that because the technology and the processors being used was so much more advanced in a home PC than what you get in a digital, that VSTs, of course, of course, uh, would be producing you know, a superior sound. Um, not only was I quite mistaken uh, that the gap was that big, or if there is even a gap at all, uh, but I read another comment by somebody who was chiming into the video saying, well, look, just because you know how to record a great sample and in theory, you know how to engineer a great piano sound doesn't mean that you've got the know-how to link the sensation of playing the instrument with the sound you're supposed to get back. That, that delicate balance of response um, of, of how you uh, give the action this physical input and all of the nuances uh, that you are expecting back. You know, that's a different specialty. That's something that piano companies probably know more about than software companies. And so this person's uh, comment was like, well, maybe it's not that, you know, maybe not only is it not better, but it is possible that the very best digital pianos actually give a more pianistic experience overall once you balance out not just the sound quality, but the playing experience itself. So really today's video is about comparing digital pianos with VSTs and what I have discovered. We're gonna let you actually hear back-to-back um, -back samples of several different VSTs against the sound of this particular digital piano, which happens to be Kawhi Novus 5. So we're gonna get set up at the piano. I'm gonna play through several things, and then we're actually going to use that exact same MIDI information to play back through several different VSTs as well as the raw audio coming out of the Novus 5. And let's see what we hear. Be back in a second. So I've had a chance to play a couple little ditties on the piano, 
taking the raw audio off the piano, but also the MIDI. And so now we're gonna listen back and see how these compare. So I'm listening to the audio output from the piano first, and here it is. Sounds pretty nice. Now let's hear that same passage this time through the Ravenscroft 275 VST. Here we go. Interesting. So the Ravenscroft, uh, obviously there's other factors here that's going to play into this. Uh, mic placement and reverb engine, I've tried to match these up as, as closely as I possibly can. So once again, there's that Ravenscroft. So obviously we're always going to be dealing with a uh, character difference between the tones. But one thing that's pretty surprising is if I didn't know which was which, and I just knew one of them was a digital piano and one of them was a VST, I'm not sure I'd honestly be able to tell the difference very well. Let's try a different VST here for just a moment. And this one's beastly. Let's try the Vienna Symphonic Orchestra. Here we go. So there's a situation where obviously I'm hearing a character difference, but there's also a bit of a difference in the dynamicism between it. Um, we're hitting kind of max velocity sample layers 
on that VST, you can really hear that fortissimo sound. Even though on the piano myself, it wasn't actually playing that much. And so the native sound engine was actually doing a better job of interpreting that touch curve mated with the, you know, the weighting of the action and all that than the VST was. I would have to go in there and do a little bit of, uh, you know, touch curve editing to get that response the way I wanted. So this is what we're going to do. Uh, I am going to uh, let play that full track off the Novus, and then we're going to do two or three other VSTs right afterward. And you guys can do your own comparing. I would love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments. And before we get started, I know, first of all, it's never going to be possible to get an apples to apples setting on the Kawhi versus these VSTs. The biggest reason being that no one actually gives you the same parameters, exactly the same way to, to tweak with. So you'd use your ears, um, but in one instance it might sound great, as soon as you get out of that context it might sound completely different. So I get that we're never going to be apples to apples in terms of setting. So there is no expectation that the character of the sound is going to be different. Really what we're listening for is quality of the tone, um, the sense of dynamics that are, that are happening, uh, the sense of depth, uh, I mean, these are the things that, uh, you know, separate a great piano experience from an okay piano experience. So anyway, we're going to let that roll. But thank you so much for tuning in to a slightly different type of a video, but one that I absolutely wanted to share with you, because it's been my own personal experience over the last couple of months. It's really been quite fascinating. Anyway, if it's the first time that you've joined us here on the channel. We really appreciate if you did subscribe and hit that notification bell. Uh, we hope you enjoy these uh, tracks coming up over the next few minutes. Uh, leave a comment and we will see you back for other videos very shortly. Thanks so much. My name is Stu Harrison and this has been Marion Pianos on YouTube.